right we're out here at the property trimming up some shooting lanes for bow hunting got river rat joe cartwright with me yeah we uh we did a little bit of hinge cutting on some stuff it's still uh it's pretty thick and i'm walking through it's kind of on my trail to come in here i got a trail through it but uh i'm leaving it pretty thick uh last year up toward that way there was about 20 rubs and about a 60 yard range of each other on some power lines and there was a scrape over that way about 15 yards last fall there's my stand uh, i got a ladder stand and then a hang on stand um, and this is this is a west facing southwest facing tree stand the sun comes up over that way you can kind of well it's overcast today but it was shining through a little bit ago but um the deer follow this this elevation this contour around the this draw the draw is probably about 35 yards out can't really see it because everything's so thick but uh they follow that you can see uh the stump over here that stump right there um that's a down tree trail crosses right in front of it um took out some of my some of my younger growth and stuff creating some shooting lanes that way it doesn't uh, deflect arrow flight uh, this is an old little location that ladder stand's been here for about 10 years uh, and i had a mineral site right there around that stuff i've got all sorts of pictures of coon i even had a hog on there one time um, and the fork of this tree is actually uh, used to be about half that size when i first started this location 10 years ago that's where the game camera used to get set up. The bucks around here are very nocturnal. Every picture I've ever had has been between 10.30 at night and two o'clock in the morning. Um, so they're, they're kind of difficult to hunt out here. Um, I've never had a daylight photo of a mature buck and that's what I'm using this property for. Actually do a little bit of the conservation thing uh, I just don't shoot everything that comes by here. Um, it's only 51 acres. So property like that, you got to kind of manage it and pick and choose. And you actually end up getting a little bit more high quality hunt out of a, a small piece like this. Um, I got a camera set up right here. That's overwatching that mineral site. I've got the Wild Game Innovations Himalayan Rock. Or no, it's not Wild Game. Uh, the powder you see is uh, Wildlife Innovations. It's that that foaming action stuff. And I got the Himalayan rock, the salt rock, right there. A little bit of corn spread out. I got a corn feeder out there that I'll probably leave up to around the 1st of October and then take it out. Um, I normally don't really start hunting this area till November anyways. Um, one here in Missouri it's uh it's still pretty hot and it's very humid especially today that's why my camera's shaking a little bit i just got done cleaning up a bunch of brush um but yeah the powder stuff that's that uh that's that foaming action you can get at walmart from wild game innovations it's uh supposed to stay a little bit longer um it foamed up pretty good and then it kind of fizzled out but I'm not too worried about it. I know uh, we got some rain in the forecast. And that stuff's going to leach down in through the ground there. And um, I got a spring about 180 yards that way. Um, and I'm probably getting pictures of myself right now. Uh, that's all right. We can delete those later. <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my time in the spotlight ended up on my own game camera <laughs> but uh that's that's all good um and it's fun i mean i don't normally do cameras and feeders and rocks and this and that uh, it's just something that in the off season it gets me out in the woods 
I've had my two boys out here uh, cleaning brush and and uh, teaching them different tracks and scat and all that kind of stuff. It's it's this kind of stuff right here is mostly just for fun. Uh, that and you know you get curious, wonder what's coming through your property and stuff. We've had a couple tree stands stolen off of here. Not sure who did that, but uh, I guess they needed it more than than the guys that owned them did. But uh, it, it happens down here in Matt County. Uh, we got some we got some real winners <laughs> here and there, but every place has got them. So y'all probably know what I'm talking about. But uh, yeah, that's that's kind of the setup I'm looking at. I'm gonna try to climb up this stand one-handed and uh, get you a couple. Of, oh, it's all right. I can get it. Uh, try to get a you some angles on on what this looks like after the lanes have been cleared uh, there's my stand from Cabela's uh, it's actually really nice the foam pad the, for the seat that came with it it's about four inches thick really nice uh, it's comfortable but here we're looking back down at that site that mineral site you can see the corn over there uh, that's that's about 20 yards uh, the the corn feeder is probably about five yards past it 25 and the trail is about 10 feet past the feeder and it starts over here and it kind of winds down comes through here right in front of that stump and we cleared out all of that right in there open that up real good and we did a little bit of clearing back over there and that trail comes around and goes back up that way and like I said they follow the contour the elevation line around that draw and uh, this area like I said uh, on camera we normally get pictures every three days um, primarily my research uh, and reading up on that kind of stuff the reasoning behind it is it's mostly just acorns out here I don't have any food plots like I said I don't normally run mineral sites like this or blocks or anything uh, so it's it's kind of just a, a feeding pattern that they use and uh, every three days it seems they come here and um, they just pass them through and eating and I've actually counted on a calendar every third day and marked it last year and I proved my own method to hunt this property I, I was here and on the third day I just happened to be here when there was deer here I counted three days I went on a job for about a month I came back I checked my calendar updated it stepped out here and normally between 8 to 9 30 is when they come through uh, by 9 o'clock I had a well the that doe I killed with my new muzzleloader Ethel um, she was dead on the ground by about nine, nine o'clock in the morning. So it, it kind of rang true that day. Um, so I thank God for giving us that meat. And, uh, it's just kind of amazing how the deer pattern themselves. I mean, they got all this woods and neighboring properties they could go to and you can sit there. I mean, it kind of takes some of the sport out of it when you're just, you know, looking to put some meat on the table. That you can just sit there and count one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, I'll be in the woods at this point. I don't have to get up at the crack of dawn and and hike through the woods at night. I know that they come through around eight to nine thirty, eight thirty to ten, um, somewhere in there. Um, but this buck, I've never seen him in the daylight. Last year I was in this stand and off over there, about fifty, sixty yards out. Uh, I heard a deer snorting, and I was here right at the break of dawn. Never seen it, so I don't know if it was a buck or a doe. I'm assuming it's that buck, though, because every, like I said, every picture I've had of him has been in the dark. And uh, every time I've been in here before daylight, I actually had a buck, a nice-looking buck. It's probably eight point or better. I was actually sitting on that, that stump over there. I was straddling that log and he came just by that tree 
and he was looking right at me and I had my wife with me and it was just a it was a bad bad setup I was trying to swing my bow up and over my wife and I got about halfway drawn back and and he spooked um, but I mean he was I mean that that close look at that I could probably spit on him and uh, I was using dead down wind I mean and he he walked all the way down this trail I heard him coming he was getting closer and closer and closer and he was so he was so close I could smell him and uh, that dead down wind a lot of people say no that scent killer stuff works a lot of people swear by it and live by it every year and always have to update all their stuff and scent blocker this and carbon and everything else but that that dead down wind it seems to do the trick that and you know shower with the dead down wind soap you know don't be spraying yourself down with the yuppie scent and all that and it's just good good practice of actually being a woodsman a hunter um you know and it just kind of paid off a little bit that morning it didn't it didn't get him but uh you know just good practice uh i'm always trying out different stuff i don't always use stuff like that um that last year that doe i killed i didn't use any of that stuff i actually urinated right out of my stand onto the ground and that doe walked within about 15 yards of me eating never never got twitchy or nothing and i could still see my urine steaming right in front of her um so i mean it's just it's as tails you never know what what's going to really happen or what's really going to work or or this or that i mean back in the day the, the mountain men didn't have none of that crap they didn't have you know digital camo patterns and all that stuff so sometimes it's good just let loose on that kind of stuff and just get back to the basics and kind of you know bring yourself back to you know the important stuff you can't rely on that kind of stuff too much but uh kind of rambling here a little bit um been a while since i've made a video and this is it's exciting because i'm fixing to go on a job and by the time i get back it will be deer season so this is my last ditch effort to get everything prepared this is the last time that i'll see these woods probably till october um so it's it's exciting um i've been shooting my bow every day and just getting ready and it's it's so close to the point now where i can taste it and if you hunt you know what i'm talking about it's just it's right it's just out of reach and you start you start going through your pack and you're playing with stuff and playing with weight and and going around and you know figuring out when well, do i need this or do i need that and coming out and, and and actually having the time to trim shooting lanes and look at stuff and kind of walk your property isn't something i normally get to do because i mean some years i only get to hunt one or two days because of work and i travel for work so it's this is really a special time for me to actually get out here and do a little bit of prep work and and just enjoy being outside and, you know with a good friend and just kind of hanging out and preparing for the upcoming season so but uh i'll go ahead and shut this off till next time